Good morning from Tokyo. Today is my second to last day in Japan, so I'm definitely going to make a count. Today I'm going to be heading to the popular mountain town of Hakone. They are known for having another sulfur spring area, similar to Nabori Betsu. And then I also want to take a boat right on their lake there. I'm also looking forward to the place I have planned for lunch. I got reservations at this place that's run by Nobu brand. It's called Ito by Nobu. And they're known for having steak and seafood, so I think that is going to be delicious. It's a bit of a journey since we have multiple trains to catch to get there, so let's go. Our first train to catch is going to be a Shinkansen heading from Tokyo Station to Odawara. Once again, I found myself in a train station at rush hour, and Tokyo Station gets so crowded. This has got to be one of the shortest escalators I've seen, it literally only has a few steps. This is a funny sign that nobody follows. Eventually, I made it to my seat on a Shinkansen in a blue car. I love the legroom on this train. There's even more legroom here than when I was on a Hokkaido Shinkansen. Look at this, I can stretch my legs all the way out. Let's enjoy a short ride to Odawara, and then I'm going to be transferring to the mountain train to go to Hakone. I saw these stairs as I was heading to my transfer to the mountain train, and they have a mural of Odawara Castle. I then decided to buy the Hakone Free Pass, which gives free access to all the transportation in Hakone. It was around $35. I made it here to Hakone Yumoto Station, and this is where we're going to be transferring to the mountain train, as I just got off a regular commuter train. And this is what our train looks like. It has a nice red color, and we're going to be on it for the next hour. This is one of three switchbacks, which means the train is now going to go in the opposite direction to help climb the mountain. I made it here to Gora Station, and I have about an hour to explore the surrounding area before lunch. Next, I picked up some snacks from shops across from the station. Rice crackers, orange drops and lemon drops, cookies in a box in the shape of the train, and orange caramels to name a few. Afterwards, I saw the train coming into the station, and wow, it was packed. Then it was off to lunch, and I took the cable car one stop, which goes up a ridiculously steep hill. I just ordered my lunch and I'm so looking forward to it. I got their special Kuroge Wagyu lunch and it's 140 grams and it only cost about 70 US dollars, which I think is a deal because when I went to Kobe, I got around 160 grams of steak and that was around 120 a person. The first course to my Wagyu meal is a bit of a seafood salad. It comes with a little bit of yellowtail sashimi and that looks like one whole baby squid that has been boiled and it's served in a miso dressing. So let's start off with our yellowtail. Then there's a fresh cut of yellowtail, and I love the seasoning. It just tastes like a citrusy dressing, and there's just a hint of miso, so it's not too salty or overpowering. Now let's go for the squid. I love how the squid is cooked. It's cooked just through, so it's really nice and tender, and it goes great with the onions on the side. They add a really nice fragrance to it, and it makes it a little bit fresher. 
Next item is our soup course. They brought out a shrimp soup, but since I'm allergic to shrimp, they were able to replace it with a tomato soup, which I really appreciate. So let's see how this one looks. It definitely has a rich tomato-y broth. It looks really dark and red. I love the balance of flavors in the soup. The broth is really intense and tart from that rich tomato-y flavor, but then it's balanced out by the carrots and, and corn that's in there because it really adds a nice popping sweetness every time you bite into a corn. They just brought our salad. This is a salad with salty lemon dressing, and it looks like it's topped with some Parmesan crisps as well as a little bit of radish and raw mushrooms. I love how fresh and flavorful the salad is. All the lettuce is really fresh, and the dressing is really interesting. It's a little bit salty, and it's also slightly sweet. But what's different from this is usually the vinaigrette is just would be made with lemon juice, but this one uses zest, so it's really aromatic. And I love the addition of the Parmesan as well, so it adds a really nice sharp flavor. They just brought out the Wagyu, and as soon as they brought out the meat, it smells really nice and meaty and fragrant, as well as the garlic. I'm smelling a lot of the fried garlic they put on here, and it's served in a wasabi sauce. I am definitely looking forward to this. This is going to be my last Wagyu meal on the trip. Mm. That is one amazing bite of Wagyu. It's just buttery, soft, and delicate. So rich and fatty. Definitely reminds me of the Wagyu I had in that Shabu Shabu recently. It's definitely a lot more fatty than the Wagyu I had in Kobe. So I actually prefer this one. And I love how it goes in the sauce. It's a soy based sauce that's really savory. And there's a very, very small amount of wasabi because you don't want to cover up the flavor of the beef. Although they serve salt on the side, there's no reason for it because the sauce already has enough saltiness to it. However, I think the fried garlic is going to make a great addition. What I'm realizing is whenever I have Wagyu steak, it almost always comes with fried garlic, and I think it's a must. It adds so much more flavor, and I really love the contrast between the soft and melty meat and the crunch from the garlic. It is definitely needed, and is a great addition. To finish the meal off, they brought out dessert, and it looks really beautiful. It's milk jelly topped with fresh melon. Let's just give this a taste. It's just so delicate and soft as I break into it. It's almost like a pudding. Oh, that is so interesting. The pudding is really soft and delicate and milky and creamy. It's so light. I don't know how they do it. It almost has a fluffy texture, almost like whipped eggs. Then the top melon on top is really sweet. But then at the end, you get a nice bit of bitterness from the melon, which I think is quite interesting. This is such a light and refreshing dessert, and it's great to finish up a meal after having a rich meal of Wagyu. That was such a great meal. I loved all the variety of dishes, and that was some incredible Wagyu. I think the price was great. It was only about $70 a person for what I got, and I thought that was a really beautiful cut of Wagyu. It's definitely some of the most affordable Wagyu I've ever had. This definitely gave me a very positive impression of my first time at a Nobu restaurant. I was really impressed with the quality of all the dishes, and I was most impressed with the price. Again, $70 really seems like a deal for that portion of food because I am so full. So I'm definitely gonna have to walk it off the rest of the afternoon. If you're in Halkoni and you're looking for an upscale meal, this is definitely the place to go. It is such a great deal. Now I'm going to be heading back to that same cable car I took earlier and I'm going to be going to the end of the line before transferring to the ropeway which is going to take us halfway up the mountain where we can see the geothermal hot springs and then after that we're going to be going to the lake. Take a look at that. It's crazy to see how much steam is here. It looks so much steamier and more intense than the Bori Betsu. This is a sign you don't see every day. If there's a volcanic eruption here, you have to run into the building, and that's because we're on an active volcano.
I just finished up the boat ride, which was nice and pleasant, but it did get a little bit cold, so I'm glad I brought my jacket. Definitely be sure to do that, because today was a bit of a warmer day in Tokyo, but it can get cold in Hakone, so definitely be sure for that. And now I'm going to be taking the bus back to Hakone Umoto Station before heading back to Odawara, so I think the bus is a really convenient option, because it only takes half an hour, and I looked up the directions, when you take the train, it takes an extra half an hour, so the bus definitely saves you time. Then it was a ride on the Hakone Tozan bus, which was really scenic as it went through the mountains. However, I had very little time to relax because I had to figure out how to get back to Tokyo. I soon found myself in a deep dilemma. It was currently about 4.30pm, and the bullet train I wanted to catch out of Odawara Station left at 6.14pm, so you might ask, what's the big deal? The problem is the bus would only take us to Hakone Station, so we'd have to get on a train to transfer to Odawara. The train leaving Hakone Station left at 5.39pm, and like I said, it was about 4.30pm on the bus, so you'd think that would be enough time, because Google Maps said it would only take 30 minutes to get to the station. However, Google Maps was very wrong with their estimate, because there is 28 stops on the bus, and although the bus didn't stop at every stop as you had to request each stop, it still took a really long time. 30 minutes soon turned into 45 minutes, which turned into 55 minutes. Eventually it was 5.32pm and the train left at 5.39pm and we were still stuck on a bus and I didn't know when the stop was, but luckily the stop came up about a minute later. That gave me 6 minutes to make it back to the train, which I thought might not be enough time because we still had to walk through the station, which was bigger than you think it would be. Somehow I managed to put my ticket through the ticket gate and then sprint through the station in 2 minutes, so that means I made it onto the train with about 4 minutes to spare. Once I made it to Odawara Station, I had about 20 minutes to get my seat reservation for the bullet train. After rushing a lot through two train stations, I was able to get seat reservations for my train, and it should be here in about 7 minutes. What you just saw was a Shinkansen going by at 180 miles an hour, and I now know what it looks like right up close and in person, and that is crazy. You could really feel the wind coming off the train, and as soon as it was there, it was pretty much gone. What's nice is we were able to get reservations on a green car this time, and the, so far the difference I noticed is it's a little bit bigger seat, and you get a footrest, although I don't know how much bigger the leg room is, looks about the same. After seeing another train pass right by my window, we are back on our way to Tokyo. I made it here to Tokyo Station and now I'm looking for dinner. I found a sushi place that looks really good. Not the same place I got lost trying to find the first night, but still, hopefully we can get here this time and actually find the restaurant I'm looking for because Tokyo Station is an absolute maze. After a little bit of searching, I finally found a place for dinner and it actually wasn't too bad. All I had to do was use the directory. My sushi just came out, I ordered 9 different cuts, and I'm going to start off with the salmon. So far I've noticed throughout my trip that the salmon is usually an indicator of how good the sushi is, because you can really tell how fresh it is. So let's start off with it. That is great salmon. It's better than anything you would get in the US. It does have a slight fishiness, but I find, unless you're pretty much getting it at the fish market that I got in Hakodate, it will have taste a little bit fishy. So for Tokyo, this is definitely a solid option. Next is a cooked one I'm looking forward to. This is the broiled conger eel. And I know I had some great conger eel when I was in Miyajima, and I really enjoyed it. This conger eel is something I can't really find back in the US. Mm. Oh, that one is great. It's so tender and delicate, just like conger eel should be. It's fresh. It melts in your mouth, and I do love the boiled flavor. It's not charcoal grilled, but I think the boiled flavor is just enough for the sushi, because so I really love how it goes with the rice. Next one is a red snapper. 
I love the snapper. That one is the best one so far. It's very fresh and clean tasting, so mild. And what I'm really impressed is the skin tastes very fresh. I really like the chew you get from the skin, and there's no fishy flavor to it at all. And that means it has to be really fresh. Now for an extremely popular cut, this is the yellowtail. And I do enjoy myself a good yellowtail. The texture of the yellowtail here is very interesting and I love it. It has a little bit of a crunchiness, almost like cartilage. It almost reminds me of a very firm fish and I think that's quite nice. And again, it's very clean tasting, so fresh cut. Now for another one of my favorites so far, this is the horse mackerel. And I've loved it on this trip because they always top it with green onion and ginger, which makes it taste a lot fresher and more vibrant. Wow, that one is really impressive. I know mackerel is a very greasy and fatty fish, so it usually has a lot of fishy flavor, but this one is so mild. I taste no fishiness, so that is extremely impressive. It's just clean and pure, and they have the perfect amount of ginger and green onion on top to complement the fish. Now for another one of my favorites, a classic one you can never go wrong with, just the red part of the tuna, the maguro. That red tuna is just blowing my mind right now. It is so fresh. It's literally just as fresh as the tuna I had at the morning market in Hakodate. And really, you're never gonna get fish fresher than that. So this is just peak premium red tuna. And it's, again, it's so delicate and fresh and vibrant in color. It really tastes like it just came out of the water. This is one I've never tried before. I thought it was really interesting. It's basically the chopped spine of a tuna and it looks like they mince it really finely and then they serve it on top of rice and it's wrapped in seaweed. That one is fantastic. It's such a different textural experience because the tuna is pureed. It is literally just like liquid and dissolves on your tongue because it's really fatty and I love the extra texture you get from the seaweed so it adds a really nice chew to it. Now for the grilled tuna, and I'm really looking forward to this one because I love any kind of seared fish. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Once again, I am shocked by the quality of that. It's perfectly seared on the outside, just seared enough. And this one has a really smoky flavor. Compared to the conger eel, it just tastes so much smokier and it does have a charcoal flavor to it. So I don't know how they do it. It's just magic. Now for the last one. This is the one I say for last. This is like the Wagyu of the sea. This is their premium tuna. And if you take a close look, you can really see all the marbling on it. Oh, what a great way to end off the sushi. That was easily the best one. This is so fatty. Compared to A5 Wagyu, there's so much more fat in this. This is like 90% fat. 10% meat. I bet if I just let it sit in my mouth, it would just dissolve and almost nothing would be left other than the rice. It is so good. That one, you have to try. I mean, it's really rich, but I could probably get like half a plate full of those. That was such a great meal. All their fish here was really fresh, and that is definitely the second best sushi I ever had, just second to Otaru, which was just pure magic, and I don't think that can be replicated anywhere else. Chances are if you're in Japan, you're gonna find yourself at Tokyo Station at some point in your trip. And I don't care what time of day it is, as long as this sushi place is open, you have to come here. It is that good. I made it back to the hotel, and once again, I'm pretty much half asleep just because it's so late tonight. And that's what I've been doing this whole trip. It's been a lot of busy days, but today was a great day. I really enjoyed my day trip to Hakone. I feel like going to Hakone is half the fun. I really enjoyed taking the mountain train there because it was very scenic. The cable car and the ropeway were also fun additions as well. My favorite part of Hakone, however, was lunch because that was delicious. I love that Wagyu lunch at Ito by Nobu and they had some other options as well, including different types of Wagyu and they had a seafood option, which also looked really good. Tonight, having a late dinner at Tokyo Station was a bit late, but I really enjoyed that sushi. I thought it was very high quality, and it really tasted like something that you would get at a fish market. So that's also another place to check out. I'm sad to say that tomorrow will be my last day in Tokyo, and because it's my last day, I left it pretty open, so I don't have a whole lot planned except for dinner, and I'm going to be meeting up with an old friend that I haven't seen in a lot of years. Anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed today's video. Make sure if you did to give it a like, and also, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.